Every journey begins with a first step. And my first step began here in our hometown of Lake Stevens. You know, you can just go a few blocks up the road, and that's the elementary school that I went to kindergarten. And a few blocks in the up other direction, that's where I graduated as a Lake Stevens Viking. Well, growing up here, I was in a middle, middle class, working class family that struggled to make ends meet. So the college that I could afford, I had to start with Everett Community College before transferring to the University of Washington where I earned my degree. But to pay for that college, I had to enlist in the Army. Now later on, after my wife and I had our first child, we struggled and we had to go on WIC, government assistance, just to feed our family. And while in the Army, I served in Kosovo and Iraq. But I came back home for my three boys because this place is so special to me. And especially for my middle child, Truman, a special needs child, I wanted a place that was safe and welcoming. I became the person that I am today because of the hometown values that this community instilled in me. Now I know during my lifetime, this small town has grown quite a bit. But you know, I look out in the audience today and I still feel those hometown values and the connection to my community. You know, I, I still get my hair cut at, with Denny at uh, Lake Steven, this, um, Steve's Barbershop like I did when I was six years old. And like you, when I buy my Halloween pumpkins, I go to Carlton Farms. Because Darren Carlton, a buddy of mine I went to high school with, manages there. And my uh, favorite high school teacher, Jeff Page, still teaching high school history, and now my son goes to the very same school. I learned to swim in our lake. I caught crawdads at Machias. I've been to so many aquafests, <laughs> in a good way. This place, Lake Stevens, is where I call home. Because this is my home, I wanted to share my decision with all of you. Now, several weeks ago, I launched my exploratory campaign for Lieutenant Governor. Brad Owen, the current Lieutenant Governor, was considering retirement. And so when he made the announcement, I received phone calls from community leaders and friends across the state, urging me to run because of my background experience my proven bipartisanship, and my experience of leadership in the Army and the National Guard. I'm proud to say that I have support of many community leaders, elected officials, and organizations. And standing behind me today is a, is a smattering of that representation, labor, business, Republicans, Democrats, and more. And so, in front of you today, in front of my community, in my friends, in my hometown, I'm officially announcing my candidacy for Lieutenant Governor of the State of Washington. Now, many of you are probably wondering what the Lieutenant Governor does. You know, some of you might know that the Lieutenant Governor presides over the Senate and is chair of the Powerful Rules Committee. And that's true. And we certainly want someone in there who's pragmatic and bipartisan to take the job. And as you know, that is my record. But presiding is not the most important part of the job. Actually, the number one job is to become the governor when the governor is out of state or incapacitated. Many of you might not know this, but our current Lieutenant Governor has managed many natural disasters and steered this state during a crisis. Just to name a few, the 2009 floods where I-5 was shut down, last year's fires, and the tragedy at Oso. I am the only candidate in this race with the proven leadership to lead this state in a crisis. I have 27 years of military service with assignments in leadership positions, conducting missions of great importance overseas and here at home. 
The Washington Army National Guard has even entrusted me with command of the Joint Force Headquarters of the Army National Guard. My experience gives me the ability to respond swiftly and with confidence in such a way that your family's safety will be my number one concern. Now I think we can all agree right here that on-the-job training cannot be the place where a new lieutenant governor learns how to manage a crisis. Not when your family's properties and lives are at stake. The lieutenant governor needs to be someone who can bring people together to solve problems, advance good policy, and move our state forward. The position can be used as a bully pulpit for bipartisan work and agreement. And certainly, as you know, I've done that over the past 10 years, bringing Republicans and Democrats together and different stakeholder groups to pass legislation like all-day kindergarten, extended career and technical education, passing the largest renewable energy bill in the state, and passing numerous veterans bills. But one bill that I'm very proud of, last year, the 2015 Transportation Package. It is the largest transportation infrastructure investment bill in the history of our state, providing $16 billion in transportation projects, along with authorization of Sound Transit 3, bringing in an estimated 200,000 jobs over 16 years. In the words of Governor Inslee, the most environmentally friendly transportation package ever passed. But I will tell you that was not an easy job to do. It takes someone to bring people together to forge an agreement between business, labor, and the environmental community, and then try to get it out of a Republican Senate and a Democratic House. And I'm proud to say that I was able to do that. And it's something that I continue, will continue to do even as Lieutenant Governor. The fact is we don't want a flame-throwing partisan in this job. We do not want to be a reflection of Washington, D.C. You know, I learned here, I learned about the hometown values right here, working together to get things done. You know, I've seen this town come together many times to solve problems, and nobody asks what party you belong to. And I firmly believe that no party has a monopoly on good ideas. You know, here in Lake Stevens, when there's a problem, all we want to hear is if you can fix it. Just roll up your sleeves and get it done. And that's what I want to do in Olympia. You know, when you elect your, your officials to office, you want someone to be like you, right? Working every day, family members trying to struggle. And I can assure you, I'm one of the few cans that understands that. Because I've got three kids, three boys. You know, I got to take one to soccer. I got to worry about another making a dental appointment. I've got another that I got to make sure he's going to fill out his student financial aid. And by God, he better get the dishwasher running. <laughs> These are the things I deal with. And though they might seem trivial, I think they're important for working families across the state to know that these are things that we have to deal with every single day. And I want to apply my proven leadership that I have experienced in the Army and the hometown values that I learned here at home to the Office of Lieutenant Governor. I believe, I believe that we can have a more effective bipartisan conversation in state government. And I believe that I'm the best person to make that happen. Thank you so much for being part of this wonderful community that my family calls home. And thank you so much for being with me on this first step of a new journey. Thank you very much.